Oh yeah. Yeah. It's really so like it's so bright. (laughs) It's cool though. I like it. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's cool. And I don't look short. Happy no, days, mate. That's t- clearly, I, it's all in the legs. And I don't look like a bean pole. <laughs> <laughs> right, excellent. Let's go for it. Oh, right, yeah. Do the three. Do we need to do that still? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Three, three, <laughs> three, two, one. Hello, morning, and welcome to another episode of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast. I am, as always, your host, Callum, and thankfully, with me as always, is the co-host, Scott. Hey, how are we doing? Yeah, very well, man. Yeah, very well. Yeah? You all right? Yeah, good. Doing, doing good. It's um, it's a little bit weird, because... It is. <laughs> as our viewers can see. As everyone's noticed. We've yeah. got a new setup. Um, something new that the studio's... Uh, Has provided. Uh, yeah, yeah, playing around with, yeah. and new little settings and, and whatnot, and uh, I have. A, bit, a bit more of a... A professional setup. Is that what's an actual set? It is. Isn't it? It's, it's an actual set. set. We've got, got different backgrounds we've got lights and, and everything. Yeah. We've, got, we've got props <laughs> and whatnot. There won't be any props. No props. No, no. props. Not this episode. No, not this one. No, no. we're we're going to settle in and then we'll get some props. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll build up to it. We feel like we <laughs> yeah. need two. As you said, we need. I think we need two ferns. Yeah, yeah between two ferns. Just sit and insult each other for. <laughs> oh yeah, we don't no difference in normal anyway. I was going to say we yeah. don't need the two ferns to insult each other. No, so. but it'll be on camera this time. So uh, yeah, lanky streak of piss. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> and so it begins. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you, you, a good week though. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, yeah, I went to where is it? Uh, week before last, went to go and see Top Gun. Yes, that was really good. It's excellent, isn't it? It's yeah. really good. Um, and uh, yeah, I loved it. Yeah, like Sam, um, a better off. Uh, she hadn't <laughs> seen the first one, so <gasps> I know sacrilege, blasphemy. So we watched that first. Yeah, and then. Within a couple of hours, we went out and got, went and saw the the new one. Oh, um, nice! Okay, brilliant. brilliant. It's excellent, isn't it? Really good. It's really good. And oh. then uh, this weekend, went to go and see the new Jurassic World Dominion. <laughs> yeah, I got your very short uh, <laughs> your very short review, which I think told me everything I needed to know. Yeah, well, <laughs> my, my kid enjoyed it. Yeah, my kid enjoyed it. <laughs> That's about as much as I want That's to say at this point because. <laughs> He may be watching. Yeah, spoilers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, spoilers. And spoilers as yeah. well, guys. Because I still haven't seen it. Annoying. I was meant to see it. Uh, what are we now Sunday, so Friday. But a few yeah. few plans got kind of intertwined, so it didn't. Uh, it yeah. didn't happen. But um, yeah, I'll go probably next week, I guess. But yeah, mm. it's not getting. It's, I mean, it's not just the critics this time, but it's not getting an amazing write up from what I um, from from kind of what I've read. Although I've tried to not read any of the spoilery ones, but yeah. Well, to, to coin a familiar phrase, utter nonsense. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> but, you know, don't boycott oh it just on this twat review. <laughs> um, go and see it. See, well, you know. th- I mean, you obviously haven't got to say anything, but just from kind of what was quite heavily um, <laughs> referenced in the last one is that I suspect they're going to now open it up to like human cloning. So have, have we now got like a load of oh, like, no, Neanderthals running around as well <laughs> as like dinosaurs or something? <laughs> you feel for f- <laughs> In all honesty, that probably would have made it better. Oh, really? Oh, shit. <laughs> right, okay. I don't hold out much hope for, mm, uh, yeah. for that. But... Uh, Anyway, it's not a uh, it's not a review episode, so uh, we'll, we'll digress as always. Yeah, as always, yeah. hey ho! Took us um, what, three minutes. Exactly, yeah, not long. <laughs> it's getting quicker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the trouble with ad libbing, I'm afraid. It, but yeah. Um, but yeah, as always, we, we want to you know kick off um, with uh, our obligatory uh, shout outs. Yes. So uh, of course, to our beloved patrons, Justin, James, and David. Hello. Hello, guys. Hope you like the new. The new setup, although everyone yeah. can see it now, so I don't know why it's just for you anymore. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I've got to get used to that. You've got to get used to got that. Got to get used to that. Yeah. Well, this is only what the second, technically the second episode, isn't it? That is going to be. That's true. Like in terms of new, the new episodes, episodes that are going out there, that are live going on. out to everyone. Yeah, YouTube. So, absolutely. Um, 
so yeah, thank you guys as always for uh, for your you know support for you know feedback and questions and uh, whatever else. Um, remember, guys, anyone else can uh, come and join the illustrious supporters club <laughs> that is the Patreon exclusive, <laughs> exclusive. Yep. Um, yeah, we've we've as we announced, I think in the last episode, we've we've gone down to just the one mm. um, tier now, um, which gives you uh, your personalized shout out at. Uh, Start and the end, if we remember to do it, <laughs> but definitely the start. <laughs> Def- definitely the start. And d- definitely the end, if, if we remember. If we to remember. Do it. Um, and it's then, my turn to do the intro. I may not remember. Exactly right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but of course, the uh, you know the early access to both the audio and video uh, podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's. I think that's it at the moment, isn't mm-hmm. it? The, the old perks. Hopefully that's enough and it, it, it causes you to come and uh, join us and support us. But of course, it's not just the, you know, financial benefit. No. It's, you know, if you can like, subscribe, share, comment. pose thoughts, yeah, comments, yeah. questions, queries, anything that you, you might have on, you know, on your chest that you want to get off of it. Um, you know, let us know. We're on all the socials. If you've got some weird cryptic monkey on your shoulder. <laughs> You know, or on your t-shirt. Or on your t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> then yeah, that'd have been a great yeah. setup if we still had the merch store, wouldn't I it? Know, it would. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're currently in the process of uh, finding a new merch store, um, yes. somewhere to, to yeah. supply our bits and pieces. So you know, yeah. the, some other the, the old favourite, you know, the original, and then so, some other merch as well. Yeah, um, not just the uh, the t-shirt. So we're trying to tackle a few different things, mm-hmm. looking for some different supplies, but also at some point going to be working on the designs. Yes. Re- you know, sort of redoing some of the older ones, um, whilst also implementing some newer ones. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, keep uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, and uh, I guess, unless I've completely forgotten something, no, we can jump jump straight, straight into, into Demons Part two. Demons Part Two. I th- I'm sure we um, alluded to that in towards the end yeah, of the last one I'm sure we did I can't remember. it's bad I can't remember yeah we, but, we did um, we alluded to it quite a few times in the yeah. last episode and I think it's it's worth mentioning as well even though we've we've been looking at demons and demon possession yeah. by extension we're looking at spirit possession as well um, yes so we're but this time round we're going to be looking at more the real world psychological aspects of it all yes um, more the sort of the I guess academic side yeah if you like so yeah as you rightly say it's more of the um, psychological um, and, and sort of medical side I guess with also a bit of real world as you know as you rightly say with some um, you know religion you know as well because you know as, as everyone can imagine every religion every culture mm. you know, quite literally almost every every country or or territory in the world has got its own kind of opinion on what possession is yeah what it's caused by you know how you you know exercise said you know demon mm-hmm. um and you know also going into a little bit of that as well but it's, it's mostly gonna be around the, the kind of the mental health you know kind of side and the yeah yeah the sort of the, the symptoms the you know the thoughts and theories all on, on kind mm. of what stems from that and um so it's, it's also worth saying that this is <laughs> no way in which to diagnose yourself <laughs> oh god yeah we're not medical <laughs> professionals in any or way this is stretch not or a form. prescription for treatment <laughs> yeah. most definitely not yeah although, exactly although i do exactly. want to say at the moment there is a there is a real big issue with people diagnosing themselves with various different mental illnesses and then well because it's cool isn't it sadly on uh, yeah TikTok, which is cool to have a, which is have, the, have a label which I think TikTok is a demon in itself anyway. <laughs> for, you know, whilst we're, you know, sort of talking about it yeah. for what it's kind of spawned, which uh, is That's a whole That's not what other. I said to you the other day, isn't it? They've got these people that are pretending to have... Um, a, a, a schizophrenia and schizophrenia dissociative or disorders. Or dis- and Dissociative disorders, yeah. Tourette's. And it's like, like they're pretending tics. to have a mil- mental illness... Is to get kind likes. Of, well, it's kind of ironic that? because that in itself must be a mental, a mental illness. illness. Yeah. <laughs> so by extension, they've double diagnosed themselves, yeah. really, haven't they? So Idiots. Yeah, so, that's putting it yeah. politely. But, um, but I'm sure the majority of our listeners and, uh, and watchers viewers yeah. watchers watchers <laughs> watchers that, that's a bit creepy <laughs> it does, viewers, isn't it? Isn't i it? thought it was fitting <laughs> some of our peepers 
It's like uh, it's like um, my neighbour called me a bit of a looker. Well, <laughs> voyeur was the reason, the actual, <laughs> the actual term, term that was used. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that's just but it's semantics. You know, we don't. But get that's into that. that's another story. That's, uh, that's, that's a different episode. That one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not for this podcast. <laughs> not for yeah. Not for this episode. I'm sure we'll, we're sure we can come on to that. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess we'll um, we'll actually jump uh, jump straight into it. Like I say, we're going to go almost kind of back to our original format for those that have stuck with us um where we go into like the the origins and um the kind of the history of, of what it is we're looking at obviously this time we're not looking at a particular cryptid or, or creature yeah so that's why you know we just both jumped into kind of medical articles and journals and try to sort of find the starting point yeah we're going to try of, uh, various not, things so we're going to try and not make it as quite so academic and read it we're from a textbook and no <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to try. try although you've probably seen the notepad so i will be kind of reading from notes um mm-hmm. i guess normally you don't see it because it's on the table but <laughs> but yeah yeah you guys will uh, but, yeah but look, will I'll, I'll the would, i would sit and do that so. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> although it might be better for the viewers i don't know <laughs> comment if <laughs> yeah yeah please comment because we'd love to hear your feedback on that <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> And don't be gentle either. <laughs> but oh, thank um, you. Oh, thank you. Um, but yeah, I suppose jumping, uh, jumping straight in again for those that that don't know, um, demon or spiritual possession um, is a altered state of consciousness or an unusual state of consciousness and associated behaviours caused by the control of a human body by spirits, ghosts demons or even gods and it was i think it was certainly for me it was pretty much that initial kind of um description um mm. that kind of led me onto the demon and spiritual possessions i know the episodes have been demons yeah but they are for the most part kind of one of the same um and you know without jumping the gun too much if you also you've got the good and the evil so you can have a good kind of spiritual possession mm-hmm. but you can have the demonic possession which is more associated with yeah, obviously like the devil and Absolutely, doing yeah. harm and obviously well, that's where Hollywood and the horror films have, have yeah. kind of you know they've, they've kind of jumped onto they've that bit a little bit big time yeah no exactly um, now the idea of spirit possession exists in many cultures and religions uh, you know as, as we said earlier including Buddhism Christianity um, you know voodoo Hinduism you know Islam Wiccan and even Native American Oh, no, you know that's more yeah. obviously a culture than a religion but yeah they've they've got their own kind of opinion on on that it um, seems to be you know, like as well mostly like the the shamanic cultures that yes you know, they, those as even well. even yeah. the shamanic cultures that still exist today yeah yeah you know there's a, they still very much subscribe to the idea of a a spirit possession or yeah um, it's almost like um i mean i'll go into it later mm. in a bit more detail but there's also yeah, the yeah. idea of um soul fragmentation as well right so okay. parts of your soul might be lost which leaves a hole in your ethereal being right which allows something something to, else to, to, to uh, okay fill that hole oh boy. Hey. there we go <laughs> there we go first one of the day <laughs> first one of the day <laughs> won't be the last one sure. i didn't think we was going to use it on this episode no i didn't think so but, but yeah <laughs> perfect <laughs> no we've got it out of the way, no, out of the way. <laughs> yes, that's it. the only one the only one it. yeah <laughs> um now of course depending on the culture or religion as, as you've just alluded to the possession may be considered um voluntary or involuntary and can have either beneficial or detrimental effects on the host which again comes kind of stems from the, the two sort of definitions really of either, you know, sort of demonic or spiritual possession. Yeah. Um, although, you know, to be honest, you don't hear too many of the beneficial ones because you won't, won't sell many theatre tickets if there's a, a nice well, <laughs> a nice positive experience from yeah, a, I mean, a possession, I, sadly. But I don't know. I've got my own thoughts and feelings about a so-called positive spirit possession. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll go into okay. that later. Yeah, yeah. Jumping yeah. the gun there. Yeah. Um, so in 1969, a study was conducted by the National Institute of Mental Health, and they concluded um, that out of 488 societies from all over the world, 78% of them had a belief in some shape or form in, in spirit possession. Um, now, the sort of majority of these came from either Native America or South America, which 
didn't really surprise me. I'll no. be honest. You know, no. especially when you, you know you look at a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of the, you know, sort of the horror films. Uh, in you know, in particular, in a lot of the literature, it all seems to stem from that part of the world in some shape or form, doesn't yeah. it? So, well, we also with, with regards to our own research when we've looked at you know South American countries and we've seen like the prevalence of so-called black magic cults or yeah. blood cults, cults you black know, magic or um, yeah. you know even like just paranormal stuff like darker and religions hauntings. sort of thing like Santa Muerte and, and mm. stuff like that yeah um, yeah so it doesn't yeah it doesn't surprise no. me so much with that really no no I mean what I suppose what maybe surprised me at the, the time is just the sheer number of of, of it said societies in the article, but basically like territories, you know, cities, towns, you know, from around the world, um, you know, and out of the yeah 488 that were that were studied, 78 mm. percent all have a belief in some way in spirit possession, mm. which is a lot. That is a <laughs> it's lot. A, it's a, it's a, a hell of a lot. Um, it, it, it seems like in that respect, the Western psychological science yeah is the minority mm. yeah <laughs> yeah exactly well and another sort of thing that didn't surprise me as, as it won't surprise you if you didn't already know of course mm. um it, and this kind of suggests that maybe possession was seen as more of the kind of the spiritual uh, and sort of beneficial you know kind of element but basically when christianity rose in prominence across mm. the world um, including African and Oceanic areas, spiritual possession quickly became demon possession mm. um, and the practice of um, uh, exorcism was created. Yeah. So it was one of those where they, they, they created the problem and it was like, oh, but don't worry because we've also got the cure, funny enough. Oh, so, that sounds which awfully seems familiar, bit, yeah, yeah. doesn't it? Seems a bit... Recent, it's very isn't apt. It? Yeah. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder what we could be talking about. I wonder. <laughs> well, it depends on whether or not this gets silenced. You know exactly. Right? Yeah, if anyone hears it. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're not saying anything. <laughs> we can neither <laughs> confirm nor deny. Nor deny. Yeah. The link. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah, the that link. is yeah, exactly. uh, that history has to yeah. today. But it's just um, another thing. You know, we've looked at the you know, sort of cryptids and uh, uh, you know. Uh, host of other subjects and in almost every one where christianity is is prevalent or is, is mentioned they were kind of the catalyst or that religion was the catalyst in how something went from like good you know to evil and this in particular because you know exorcism yeah. didn't exist as a practice um in terms of how they do it at least um and, until that as a religion kind of rose in, in, in prominence so again it was like yeah they created the the problem created the problem but then created also the created the cure as well yeah wow. so interesting uh, mm. <laughs> we'll leave that one there leave that one drifting out there for everyone <laughs> we'll just drop that there <laughs> yeah exactly and, um, uh, let everyone else make their own opinion exactly um from its beginning um christianity has believed the um the possession um comes from the devil um, mm. and Satan is believed to engage in spiritual attacks including demonic possession against humans by the use of supernatural powers to harm them physically or psychologically um, prayer for deliverance um, blessings um, sacraments and exorcisms are generally used to drive the demon out gotcha um, yeah. all of which were obviously introduced by by them you know, created the, created the devil and possession, and they said, "But don't worry, you know, we we can we can cure you. We can come and come up. and join us." And yeah, <laughs> we've got a monthly payment plan for that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Your soul. Your is soul mine. is mine. <laughs> um, I watched that yesterday, by the way. Oh, did you? The new one. Yeah, I still like it. Yeah, the new one. The the the, the sort of the remake. Oh yeah, guess, yeah, uh, yeah. From last year. Well, yeah, Whatever. a bit further back than that. I'm sure it was 20, what, 2021, 20, was it 2020? Yeah, I'm sure it Possibly. was. Possibly. Last couple of years anyway, but yeah, it still, still holds up, I think. It, yeah, it's, it's still, good. still better than uh, Annihilation, that's for sure. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. 
Christ Almighty, yeah. No, <laughs> anything is better than that. Yeah, I know, right? Ja- well, yeah. I don't know. I haven't seen Jurassic World yet, but <laughs> almost anything. Do you know, that, that was just to digress again. Yeah, I actually on. read in a review that someone said that even Jurassic Park 3 was better than Dominion. I was like, I can't believe that. It can't be that bad, surely. That's not a bad point. Oh like at least okay. at least Jurassic Park three made some sort of cognitive sense. Oh god, right, okay. <sighs> right. <laughs> I look forward to that. Yeah. Well yep. haven't said anything now. Um <laughs> in the uh in the New Testament it is believed uh that Judas was a victim of uh, demonic possession and this mm. is why he continually agreed um to betray um J C. Yeah, that's what we brought out yeah, last time. Mentioned we, it yeah. last time. Yeah, they, um, they. Yeah, I, I, when I say they, I don't know who that refers to. Probably the rest of the uh, <laughs> disciples or the whoever they were. <laughs> whoever they were, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it just look, says they. So you don't I, look like you care either. I don't care. No, it's religion. <laughs> I couldn't care less. <laughs> but, no, but that's why they. Um, no yeah, no but, but that's why they. Um, yeah, that's why they felt that he was. He must have been. You know sort of demonically possessed to yeah continuously betray him and, and kind of go against him you know god forbid he just thought he was full of shit and just thought yeah do you know what no i'm not buying that <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what the well i don't know what the early christianity term for full of shit is but it's uh, <laughs> full of shittus or something full of shit full of shittus <laughs> full of shittus <laughs> but you're <a> centurion <laughs> Like Nautius Maximus. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, now, Roman Catholic uh, states that um, the angels are non corporeal spiritual beings with intelligence and will. Mm. Um, so, basically, like fallen angels or, or demons are able to demonically possess individuals without the victim's knowledge or consent, um, leaving them morally blameless so i think yeah. that so then that is and i'm sure you'll sort of come onto this um but this is obviously where a lot of the whole plea bargains in certain you know criminal cases where they plead insanity or you know the, the voices told me to do it and all yeah, that thing exactly. i think that you know will kind of stem from the kind of religious connotation that you can do something evil or bad and you can blame a demon possession and it's like oh okay well you know you you, you wouldn't have done that if you'd known so it must have been a possession but, so that's fine that's your then, kind of get out you know yeah i guess so but i mean also if that's the sort of sort of the thing i mean the, uh, there's a very very good point that's made in this particular article that i found that is about spirit of possession and its connections to mental illness and one particular one in, in particular but i won't say it now i will leave that for later and it says that the western societies like psychological societies view on demon possession and how quickly they dismiss it yeah is wholly highly unscientific right because it's not taken into that as an, into a, into account mm. with regards to its studies and its data collection and also yeah. its exploration and experimentation well so yeah. if you know it's, it is a very unscientific approach to just quickly just dis, just dismiss it Dismissing as it. the ramblings well, it, of mad people because it's easy and, and who's going to go up against you know religion at that point and then start dragging that through the mud by but saying the thing is we can't all, we've we've already established that the psychological um, academia mm. is the minority in yes. in its in its like because it's, it's in like what twenty five was it twenty seven percent of mm. that population that yeah. just straight up don't believe it so you know you've got seventy odd percent yeah of those territories so they very much believe in very much believe in it so you're, you're, it. you're drastically outnumbered in mm. you know in that respect and, and also just you know feeding off that and again we come onto it again a bit later but a lot of the institutions and associations particularly in the united states that are all um in sort of mental health uh in terms of you know trying to support it and you know and help cure it and that don't actually recognize demon or spiritual possession as a diagnosable no um sort of condition if you like for the most part it's so it's, it, up until the 80s it was pretty much schizophrenia 
that's I mean that yeah I mean pretty yeah much it, really yeah funny yeah interesting enough that is one of the uh, <coughs> sort of recognised um, symptoms um, that that people kind of believe you know if you display this as as well as a you know a host of others mm. then that's actually what's wrong with you not demonic possession but it's it's the cause of one of those actual diagnosable symptoms that causes you to think that you are yeah possessed in some shape or form which I thought was quite um was was quite interesting um now also like sticking with uh, catholicism um the the the, the sort of the exorcists differentiate between ordinary activity and influence which would be kind of everyday temptations um or extraordinary activity and this and it it kind of takes six forms which i was quite surprised with actually Mm. um that there's actually different types of um like possession i guess yeah based on yeah certain yeah i mean there's there's you know possession in its simplest form um where you know where demons take full possession of a person's body um, without their consent. Then there's obsession, um, and this is like sudden attacks of obsessive thoughts which can lead to suicidal tendencies, mm. which I think is quite, quite dangerous to play with that one, I yeah. think, as a, as a demonic possession kind of, you know, because, you know, anyone can sit there and think, well, I've had obsessive, you know, when I've, you know, suffered with depression for example you know yep. you could be like well I've sat there and had obsessive thoughts about you know harming oneself or, or whatever yeah. you know and so playing playing with that or toying with that as a you know from the religious standpoint I think you know it's quite dangerous but it was interesting to see that that was kind of included in there as a separate kind of yeah I mean the suicidality is something that, that does crop up a lot in, in this sort of this sort of topic yeah. I mean I I do agree with you to a certain extent that it is dangerous to, to throw that one in there because there could be a hundred different reasons as to why someone might be having those thoughts and feelings yeah exactly yeah but at the same time exactly. you can't just you can't just dismiss it no, it can't be dismissed. No, it's, no, not at all. No, but it's, it's, it's more that the, the, they're linking it to the religious side of mm. possessions, and obviously noting this under a demonic possession. So they're saying, well, if you feel, you know, if you feel depressed and have those thoughts, then that's wrong, and you must be, you know, possessed by something. That's yeah. more the mindset that I've kind of taken Mm-mm. with it, I guess. But yeah. no, you're right. You can't, you can't dismiss it. And I suppose at least they're kind well, of dealing with it, but it's more so the negative mm. well, with any of it, I guess, but that in particular. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I, I've certainly been able, I mean, I've, I've spoken about um, uh, my history mm. with depression and, and stuff yeah. like this. And, and I've got no problem talking about it because I think people should yeah, likewise, yeah. talk about those sort of things. And, and yeah. I, I do, I, I don't know if it is healthy for me to, to have that sort of th- thought process, but when I was at my lowest and I was having those sort of thoughts and feelings, mm. looking back on it, the way for me to be able to, um, to process it all, mm. looking back in hindsight, yeah. was being able to, go back and think well okay that wasn't me as a whole that was me broken yeah pieces yeah. missing mm. you know yeah so same yeah those pieces that were missing were being taken up by that's that little voice mm. you know the the whole yeah. concept of the you know the angel on your right the devil on your left yeah yeah you know where you've got that little bit everyone's got that little bit of duality in them but that sometimes one pop, takes over yeah. exactly mm. or there are external forces that yes. are attempting to make you do certain things. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Or feel a certain yeah. way. I mean, if 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 you believe in the soul, mm. then yeah. surely you must be able to believe in entities that exist in some because we can't touch yeah. our soul. We can't experience our soul no. in in this sort of setting. But if you believe that it's there and it's within you, then surely there's stuff that's external to that that exists within on the same sort of yeah, plane of existence, I guess, without sounding too. Yeah, <laughs> you know. No, but it makes sense. I mean, even just breaking it down to something simple, like you know, if you believe in not even like the soul per se, but if, you know, if you go around thinking believing in you know soulmates and that you know and that yeah. connection, if you believe in it that deeply, then you have to allow yourself to. Mm. Look at the whole picture. Exactly. Not just, not just pick and choose the bit that you want to... If you're going to look at it, look yeah. at it scientifically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, 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 yeah, that was kind of my two cents on 
on that um, inclusion on the obsession um, sort of trait um, or store yeah temptation I guess as they uh, as they note it mm-hmm. um, oppression um, is the the third one uh, and this relates to a loss of consciousness or involuntary action uh, it could relate to making wrong business decisions um, like in the book of uh, like in the book of job where he just just makes a whole host of bad decisions <laughs> yeah. so they're, they're again they're basically saying that you know it's there's a reason for it it's not just you know you've made bad life choices and it's just like you know rotten luck or whatever it's like no yeah. you've you've done that involuntarily or yeah you've lost consciousness and then done something well but when you when you're in a different even if you're you're going to look at it from or, like a, an archetypal sort of point of view so a, a jungian side of things um so get looking at it from a psychological point of view um it, it, the archetype of that in yeah. itself would be you're making bad decisions because you're not whole. You haven't made yourself whole as yeah. a being. So there's something that's in there that's you've got a, yeah. you know taking you, trying to lead you astray. Yeah, sort of. You're thing. giving the space to something. Yeah, to take that whole and. Hmm. Yeah. And even if it is just an archetype and like mm. the stories and parables that we've that we've grown up in now, because we've grown up in a Judeo-Christian. Mm society you know it's seemingly our um morality and and, and such all kind yeah. of stems from the bible essentially yeah man um i mean you could probably make a couple of different arguments against it but yeah ultimately that's 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 ultimately what the the sort of society that we live in and if you are yeah. just going to look at it from the archetypal sort of point of view yeah and um then yeah it's, it's sort of it makes sense that Mm. You know, you are making these poor decisions because you're not whole. Yeah. You know, and you think that- it's it's sorry to to Go on. to carry on, but there's um, that evolutionary psychologist, Dr. Jordan Peterson, um, yeah. brilliant mind. Uh, it's a bit Great controversial mind. if anyone does know him, and quite our, controversial. Probably our listeners stateside will certainly know that name. In terms of who I listen to at the moment, he's probably the most misunderstood guy yeah. <laughs> in yeah. like pop culture at the moment because he'll say something you know, that makes sense and someone just flies off the handle and is like no you don't mean that well, you can't say that and like, listening no, no, to I everything didn't, I didn't say that yeah. he's very careful with the words that he chooses yeah, yeah, and even careful. in his book he's very very careful I, I read 12 Steps uh, to Life and Antidote mm. for Chaos and I think what, what, I can't remember if it's the first one but it's one of the first rules to the life yeah. um, was make your bed and it's and that in itself is an archetype. Make your bed. Make sure you are whole before you go out there and start trying to change the world. Yeah. Because if you're trying to change the world and your room's an absolute mess, then what right do you have exactly. to try and do that? Yeah. If you haven't got, well, that's what they say. Like, if you haven't got your own house in order, how can you go out and exactly. comment on other people's? Or whatever? And that in itself could be extended to this. Yeah, Get exactly. Get your house yeah. in order, and you'll start making better decisions. So mm. if you are whole as a being, yeah. rather than having all these little cracks and and yeah. fragments missing. That, that something else could get into and, and, yeah. and try and, uh, you know, make you go a certain way. Yeah, and that's certainly where this has come from. Obviously, yeah. you and I know it's not that easy to no. be, you know, sort of whole and not have those cracks or, you know, whatever oh, in, yeah. in kind of yourself or your psyche or, or kind of whatever. And I know that's what we'll come on to, you know, sort of a bit later. But this is certainly what, you know, the religion side tries to sort of suggest mm. that, it, you know, it sort of is that easy. These are the, the six things to kind of look out for and, you know, sort of set yourself up to kind of shield against them. But yeah. the reality is that, you you know, you can't, or it's certainly not that that easy. Um, so, yes, that's, that's, the, that's the oppression. Um, then you've got simply external physical pain, which, of course, is caused by Satan and demons. Of course. Yeah, so that, I guess that, that is, that'll be things like self-harming um, and... Well, pretty much that. It was the only thing I could think of. There's, there's self-harm and then there's also um, physical manifestations of pain, which I've got I've got a yeah. case study about that yeah. as well, actually. Yeah. I've got two, in fact, that, you know, mm. we, they're just little transcripts. Yeah, cool. But, um, yeah, we'll come on to that. Yeah, cool. Um, so that's, yeah, that's quite literally just, you know, physical pain externally then you've got infestation the next one and that can affect homes that can affect objects and you know sort of animals so it's not just infestation in the sense of you know 
rats and locusts and and you know and that kind of thing or oh, pestilence it's, yeah sort of thing it's okay. more, yeah um oh i see so like wherever you go there is pestilence sort of thing it's like you 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 move into a house and suddenly it's it's infested with cockroaches or yeah or something like that yeah. is that what you is mean that, yeah it, it's partly that yeah gotcha it's partly that as well it, it's the physical but also the, the mental um infestation of either like you know negative thoughts or, oh okay or sorry invest in well, invest in an object or it, like a home and then that then creates a bad vibe and um the, the animals one i didn't get and it, they didn't explain what that one was so that one i'll, I'll admit i don't get mm. uh, unless they physically mean that an animal is infested like well there's like, there's different superstitions surrounding different animals um, I mean, that might have like the, like the black cat. The black cat is supposed to be unlucky, mm. you know. So, or um, they say like if you're one of the other superstitions with regards to crows mm. um, or, or corvids in in general, really. Um, like if they're like gathering mm. on on a roof, yeah. then there's likely been a death in that family yeah. or, or something like that. Something negative. You know, yeah. I guess it's something like that. So that like, where. Uh, People that don't subscribe to the oh, I suppose, yeah, infestation of animals as opposed like as opposed to of the animal itself. Yeah, well, I mean, okay. I think one of the worst sort of infestations of no, animals you must that. have is a fox shitting on your doorstep every night. <laughs> that would piss me off. <laughs> I mean, that yeah, I think that would piss anyone off. Yeah, especially the frigging racket they make and all. Fucking ain't that right? Things. <laughs> Get that round my way, noisy <laughs> yeah. bastards. We do live in the. Essex countryside, yeah, for the, the most part, didn't you? So, for the most part, yeah. So, so you, you can hear them, stuff you, like that. Yeah, you can hear them getting the uh, the rabbits and and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, like it's yeah, it's weird. It's yeah. weird. You kind of get used to it a little bit, but I mean, I mean, apparently one of the things if you do have an issue with foxes, urban foxes or uh, more rural foxes, best thing to do go piss on your fence. <laughs> that keeps them away. <laughs> <laughs> right, fair enough. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> fair enough. There you go. There you go, yeah. Yep. I don't feel I've got not much to say to that. Really. Tried and Just tested going... method, guys. Tried and tested. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, that's that's painted an image. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> um the last <laughs> the uh, the last one is um subjection so it is in you know it's in which a, a person will voluntarily submit itself to a demon so this this comes into play in a lot of the cults more so than you know sort of religion so like wiccan and pagan and that for example there's a lot of practices where a higher priestess or a, excuse me a goddess will open herself up to demonic um or spiritual possession mm. to take um the the spirit of said god or goddess or whatever to help um uh what's the word um communicate mm. their their message it's an invocation of whatever deity that they're yeah trying to mm. open themselves up to i guess it's an invocation that's basically so, what it is mm. so yeah certainly in um the the pre-abrahamic religion sort of yeah. uh, cultures or shamanic shamanic yes, cultures exactly is probably the best practice, way to, yeah. to 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 characterize them the shamanic cultures um they use a lot of invocation mm. of the gods mm. that you know if a more reductive view of it all would be that they're just higher spirits because um, right. there, there is very much a uh, across pretty much all cultures really there's this idea of a higher world a middle world and a lower world um, and entities exist within all of that so if we were to take the more Abrahamic sort of religions yeah. you've got heaven yeah. then you've got this world which would be like the middle world or Midgard, middle earth <laughs> Midgard or middle earth <laughs> yeah. and then you've got like hell yeah um, or the, you know the various different incarnations of that of, yeah. of all of it, um, and the shamanic cultures have an understanding of the different entities, the countless yeah. different entities that exist within all of it. So, yeah. like okay. the, the, the idea with like when they do like um, like the Native Americans mm -hmm. would do like the rain dance, they invocate like there's an yeah. in, as an invocation to the spirits to bring rain to various different parts of of the land or wherever yeah. it is that they are. Yeah, um, yeah that, that exists all the way around the world. 
and yeah you know definitely yeah so that yeah so that, that, i mean that's that's it, it during I, I didn't think of those cultures in in particular like you know native american or or shaman although i briefly come on to them a little later but yeah they were they were the two that specifically kind of jumped out at me in terms of yeah mm. any sort of requesting i think i think anything of, of any cultures nature. that do very much believe in the idea of the spirit world and spirit possession and, and stuff like that probably have an idea uh, an element of subjection in their it's, practice it, don't they yeah, yeah and it's, it's probably best way to to categorize them as shamanic cultures because then you're, you're talking about all of them because they all have these shared beliefs right yeah, that's probably the best way to categorise them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the only reason why I've not at this point is because they, when I was doing my research, shamans and sh- shamanic culture came up as a separate, as like a separate thing in its own right. You know, so it's separate to like Wiccan and to pagan and, and Native American practices and everything. Mm. So I didn't think to make the I think that the, comes the down. sort of the connection or put them under that umbrella because yeah. it it separated itself. So I led that that led me to believe that maybe there were slight nuances or differences that would kind of oh yeah you know, i'm saying you're wrong but that, that, that's yeah, why no, i've no, not yeah. that's what i've not sort of made that mm. grouping it um, probably comes down to as, the individuals yeah. really like Dan, you know more, that, far more about it than i do I, you know this is pretty likewise. much the first i'm learning a lot about it yeah. so um was that yeah i know the yeah, witchy poo side. You've got a little bit more of a little bit. I've got an understanding. More of an understanding than yeah. I wouldn't say I'm. I'm not that you are, but you've got an idea of it. Yeah, I've <laughs> I've not got no idea. <laughs> well, I've had I've been on my travels, been on my journeys. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I, I subscribe to some of it. Maybe yeah, all of no, it. No, no, not all of it. No. But, um, but uh, yeah, so that's the sort of the the from what I could see, that was the six forms that. Um, that the that Catholicism um, kind of know as the the different yeah forms different types of um, possession um, and that and, and this is just stuff that all of us listening or watching this will kind of go through on a daily basis which is why I think they note it as everyday temptations um, or extraordinary activity but yeah a lot of this you know I mean you know for the most part you know you could sort of pretty much say well yo I, well, I've, that's happened to me but i've not been possessed <laughs> you know i've just had a wobble or you know a, a bit of an off moment or yeah. you know whatever but i guess what they've tried to do which is quite clever i guess and, and the thing with religion is they've tried to take real world everyday stuff that you or i would naturally experience or feel or, or kind of go through mm and said but that's not right you know you shouldn't be feeling like that so and if that's what you're not normally like you must be you must be possessed or you must be you must be going through something yeah so, I mean, and, and, I think, and so they've tried to categorize it i guess in yeah i think um I that's think, how i've read it anyway wrongly or rightly that's, I think how, you're I've, right. that's I think, how i've perceived it i think i think you're what you are right there and i think they're half right in in their estimations with it all in the you know if you've got these thoughts and feelings and you're having these these uh experiences in within reality objectively it's not right yeah you know it's, it's, it's something's not right there yeah yeah as That's to right. the actual cause of it all mm. to straight up go oh it's, it's the devil yeah, yeah. you know like <laughs> yeah. You know, mrs boucher Mrs. boucher's back yeah yeah running behind everything's you with the a, devil yeah with an alligator on a stick <laughs> um, yeah but yeah it's just yeah. yeah i think i might not subscribe to the, you know the Vatican's view mm. of it all. However, the Vatican's view of it all isn't that different from the shamanic cultures. It's just if there's a possession of sorts from within yeah. that that um, Abrahamic religion yeah. view, then it is a negative. Um, yeah, and okay. there's no such thing as the invocation of a god or invocation right. of a higher spirit unless of course it's one of the archangels or something yeah, like that yeah of course but, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah there's there's issues yeah, with yeah. structured yeah. religions there's loopholes like that in, you know in all of it monotheistic re- less, religions yeah. there is an issue with them i mean i found you know and this you know, without getting too much into it but just for, the more and more that i read there are so many similarities between all of these religions. It's almost like they've all read this from the same like source material and they've just gone, right, well, I like that bit and that bit and that bit. So I'm going to take that and that's going to be what I believe. And yeah. someone's like, well, no, I, I actually just believe this bit, this bit and this bit. Yeah. So I'm going to take that and that's going to be my belief. And it's like, okay, you all, you've all read from the same 
source material here, yet you all hate each other or you all believe in a different God. But it's yeah. like, if there is a God, you pretty much believe in the same one. You're, you've just given it a different name. From what I understand... That's kind that's, of my very kind of layman sort of well, understanding from what I've read. Yeah, and, and I think I think you're right in that. in in Because that's, from what I understand, that's actually how Islam sees it. So Islam okay. actually sees the Quran as the original translation of the Bible. Yeah. Basically. So they in Islam they don't deny Jesus Christ or mm. anything like that, but they deny that he was the son of God. Yeah. They don't deny that he was a prophet, you know, very much along okay. the same lines as Muhammad. But they yeah. believe that the Quran is is truer to the word or that was that was right. spoken then than what the Bible is to this day. So for right. instance, the Bible has gone various different translations and rewritings, namely the King James King James Bible, mm. um, yeah. where everything mm. did get changed up and that mm. seems to be the main understanding that people are certainly preaching from. Yeah. At this point. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And and the idea is that from from an Islamic point of view, their word in the words in the Quran are far more truer than the words in the King James Bible. So oh, that's right. the argument wow. that's being. That I, oh yeah, that but I've he was seen. a wasn't he an author or something? Wasn't he a, a, a literate or something? And not illiterate. He was a literate. So he didn't he? Oh, it's just it's just he the name. sanctioned the writing. He, of it? he sanctioned the writing of it. And it was uh, Francis Bacon who wrote it. That was it, Bacon. Yeah, okay. Who was also yeah, being connected like that, yeah. with uh, William Shakespeare. That oh, do they are one of the same? Yeah. Supposedly. Supposedly, yeah, yeah. Supposedly. There's, there's, we'll cover that in a different... Mm. <laughs> and he was a Freemason. And he was a Freemason, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, yeah, no, it's all, it's all interesting. And, uh, you know, I don't say any of this to, you know, offend or... I think you know, people upset, understand that, Upset yeah. anyone. That's just my kind of layman sort of understanding of the various, you know, sort of religions that that does very much seem to be the kind of, you know... You know, they've just they've essentially just cherry picked the bits that they liked from, you know, the source material and gone, well, I'm going to take that and actually that's going to be my religion. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'll take these bits then and that will be mine. All right, great. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to hate you for it though. <laughs> yeah. like, no, 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 hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that doesn't work like that. Like, well, supposedly, that's not how that works. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so no, no, uh, we no, no offense meant, but yeah, we digress. Um, so jumping from that into the kind of the, the Baptist tradition, they actually issue a warning against communicating with the dead in the form of like mediums and mm. stuff like that. Um, they don't agree with it. They don't, they, they sort of advise against it yeah. almost. Um, and of course, a, a Christian right um, will uh, be required to set the person free from... Um, yeah, communicating with spirits or inadvertently being, you know, mm. sort of possessed by one um, and that kind of thing. So, yeah, of course, there's a, you know, they they kind of introduce the idea of talking to, <laughs> of like, of talking to <laughs> spirits with like, with like praying and all that kind of thing. And it's oh, like, yeah. oh, but, but don't do it though. Like, this is what you've got to do, but don't do it. Mm. But if you do do it, then we can help you out, but don't do it. <laughs> it's like, go out, but don't go out. Yeah, but go, go out, to work, don't, go, out, don't go, go to work. Go, if you need to go to work, go to work, but don't go to work. <laughs> you need to go out, don't go out. You want to have some friends over, have, have, don't have some friends over. Have, have them over, but don't go out. Yeah. Go out, exactly. don't go out. It, yeah, it, it, yeah, and again, that, it, it kind of made <laughs> me jump to that. Exactly. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, it made me jump to that um, yeah. when I, I started reading this. It's like, no, hold on, like you, you sort of encourage you know, your congregation or whatever you call them to sort of believe in the afterlife and all this, but you're not allowed to talk to them. But if you do talk to them, then we've got something to help you out. Well, why would you have something to help you out if you weren't supposed to do it? Yeah. So there's, a, like, there's a lot of holes in the like, logic. Yeah. Contradictions. But hey-ho, <laughs> that's for another <laughs> That's for another time. I was, this is coming, I was this all is really done. It's a bit of a re religion bashing. bash, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's really not meant to be. Church bashing episode. We're not, we, it wasn't supposed to be. No. It's just it's just coming across with the different... Just Callum's bigotry is coming out at yeah, the moment. Yeah, why isn't that? That doesn't help, but that's just the mood I'm in, so <laughs> who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no it's just how I'm feeling right now. I'm yeah. feeling a bit of a bigot. So no one's... Gonna uh, say that's it. No one's safe. <laughs> <laughs> no, no see, it's not meant to be like that. It's just, you know, and all I'm doing is reading what I've, you know, sort of found mm. online. These aren't, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm forming my own opinions to an extent, but all I'm reading is, is, 
information from mm. various you know medical journals because remember this is about possession and but i'm just going through the different religious um beliefs or understandings as to what can either cause mm. possession or what can cure it or yeah. you know kind of what the, the the i say common belief but you know what the general belief behind it is but when you go into each you know either you know religion or form of church or cult even in some term uh, in some phrase culture as well you know again they've all got a different idea of what the same thing means mm. and so it's like right we're going to take possession but we're actually going to take it as being like the native americans you know we're going to take it as a positive thing we're going to take it as a good it's an invocation a good thing you know an enlightenment and that kind of thing and christianity was like no 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 we're going to take this same thing but we're going to use it as a weapon the and we're going to, and and we're going to demonize it and we're going to you know mm. blah, blah. so that's i'm just kind of trying to bring the different um you know elements you know forward like i you know said before like a <laughs> little disclaimer it's not to you know offend or upset i'm just no yeah, bringing it. That's cool. Bring it to the populace, I suppose. Um, now, in evangelical Christianity, the exorcism of uh, demons are um, often carried out by individuals or groups who belong to, um, uh, like, deliverance um, uh, ministries. So it will be that they'll ha they'll have like a specific um, a specific purpose. And so it can't just be, it says individual, so it's still more than one person, so it's still a group sort of per se. So it's like, you know, when you see on TV, specifically in like the States, you mm. have the big congregations oh, the and it's all very happy clappy and all very over the top and theatrical. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the it. televangelists. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. It, that's again. That's the vibe that I got when oh, I Kenny read Copeland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he was bound to turn up when he at some point. <laughs> Can't talk about this stuff and have him oh, not turn up. Exercise, and he, he's exercised some demons. Uh, oh, I'm sure. He, he has. On, on TV, yeah, COVID being one of them. Yeah, oh, exercise the world of COVID. Oh, the winds <laughs> of God. <laughs> he's, just, he's brilliant. He's. I mean, if look in the geezer's eyes, he, yeah. there is there is nothing godly in his eyes he is possessed by a demon that i i guarantee you all you've got yeah. to do is just look at the the way he interacts with people outside of that televangelist setting yeah yeah and like his eyes are different man yeah they are like i'm gonna start a conspiracy they theory blink, right they here. blink both ways don't they that's right yeah <laughs> a little bit of fire horizontal and vertical <laughs> but yeah he um, yeah that geezer ain't yeah. right no um but the, yeah, these these groups believe that symptoms of possession include um, chronic fatigue, homosexuality, <laughs> addiction to porn, and alcoholism. Well, three out of well, four ain't bad. Fuck me, yeah. <laughs> That's the same. <laughs> yeah. Three out of four. Yeah, three out of four ain't, ain't too bad. So I'm only partly possessed and, <laughs> and need to be um, exercised immediately. <laughs> yeah. I'll, let, I'll let everyone decide what three out of the four <laughs> um but yeah i mean just to yeah just to coin a my favorite phrase what utter nonsense yeah, know, <laughs> yeah, right, he's yeah. like come on dear oh lord um they um they believe that if you have um that if if you've and, and this is kind of to work against that so what they believe and this is where the contradiction comes in is that they believe that if you have committed your faith to christ then you can't be possessed so i'd like to see if you know you have someone that's committed to christ but just so happens to be gay mm. where do you, where do they where, what side of the fence do they sit on with that one well, you know you know what they do with, a, you know what they do with them though don't you they just move them careful. about <laughs> move them about <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Just move them about. Just move them about. That's <laughs> yeah. all they do. Yeah. <laughs> that's, you, that's what you're going to say on that. That's all I'm going to say. Right. <laughs> right, okay. Just dropping that little breadcrumb. And... I've already said a few things today, and I've, uh, th that comes out to too much caffeine, too much sugar. So I'm trying to... <laughs> well, so I've, I've not had enough sugar or caffeine, so that's probably... <laughs> we're just like that. That's why we've got two different paces going on here. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. That's why I'm like, bop, 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 and you're just like... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just dropping uh, just waiting for the shakes to kick in just waiting for the, the withdrawals because <laughs> I'm waiting to just crash <laughs> <laughs> um, now uh, spirit possession um, including demonic um, is not a psychiatric or 
medical diagnosis no. recognised by any of the main governing bodies, as I alluded to earlier. So any of the main um, associations um, or yeah, governing bodies, medical journals, uh, medical stuff. journals, that kind of thing. Uh, particularly in the states, from what I found, but it could obviously extend to anywhere. Um, they they don't see it as a recognisable psychiatric or yeah medical diagnosis so when you see a lot of these criminal cases where you know the um the the not the victim the devil told the me to word? do it perpetrator perpetrator thank you i just couldn't remember think of the word that it, when they come out with the whole you know you know sort of oh you know the voices told me to do it or you know i was i was possessed and they you know and they, well, i wasn't it's in the, control it's the plea of insanity it's isn't the it? plea of insanity mm. yeah that that's um Although th that seems to be what gets people off. It's very reductionist. It's not actually a, yeah, recognisable mm. medical trait, whether it be physical or, or, or mental. So I thought that was quite interesting. And so many cases have relied heavily on that as a, as a, a sort of a verdict. And tr strictly speaking, a judge could turn and say, well, no, that's, that's not recognisable. You know, I yeah. get that it's happened, but it's not. But then you're going up against, you know, the, the mental health world and religion. And it's, it's, to, to be fair to the judges, it's not worth it. No. Because you're just opening up a whole can of worms with yeah. that one. You, you, you're sort of solving one problem by causing multiple others um, in that respect. So I, yeah. I get why it goes that way, because how do you argue it? Mm. Yeah, he's, he, if he can't be diagnosed, he can't be proven. It's like you know, not that I'm making the comparison, but like, well, it, this is the thing: it, it, can't, be, it can't be diagnosed it? because they're not trying to diagnose it. That you know what I mean? They're, they're not looking at it in a scientific not method looking for that. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. if then if they're not looking for it, then like to them they, they can't they, diagnose it. Yeah. Well, they, they don't believe it exists. <laughs> They don't, they, yeah. You know, the medical well, journals, the medical side of, of, of things with regards to spirit yeah. possession, they just straight up don't believe it exists. So they're not <laughs> looking to it, diagnose it's, it. Yeah, it's a weird one. Like they, they don't believe the possession exists, but what they do believe in are various symptoms that that lead the sufferer to believe that they are possessed. So it's kind of... They do, they do, and they don't. They're they, they, there. they, yeah, they, they'll believe it to a point, basically until science stops. They believe that their, their <laughs> as, clients, as far as they believe it, they believe that their clients' experiences are real to them, but that's as far as it goes. Yeah, basically, yeah. So if you're dealing with a psychiatrist or yeah, a, a sort of a medical professional, um, then they won't readily diagnose it yeah. um, from from what I've read. Um, but in clinical psychology trance and possession disorders are defined as states involving a temporary loss of the sense of personal identity and full awareness of their surroundings or of these surroundings so that's okay, a little yeah. bit so in, that makes in sense. clinical psychology it's a li they seem to be a little bit more open to kind of diagnosing what that person is you know is kind of going through by saying that they're in a trance or possessed possessed uh, state yeah um, yeah I think you know, in, yeah, in, in I that regard it, that's quite a a vague definition it is very vague I that, think but it's, it's vague. It, it leaves it open to pretty much anything falling exactly. under falling under a temporary loss of sense of personal identity because <laughs> they yeah. could say oh, well I wasn't it wasn't me I was possessed by a I demon I wasn't feeling myself yeah exactly oh well okay well then you must have been like, you know so it's very vague so it's, again it's quite dangerous mm. to kind of leave it like but that they but they do that at they least they that have even, it like for instance like with crimes of passion and stuff like that like momentary loss of control yeah that would essentially come under under that which is not it's not the, it's well, not well, the same thing the, the same, red mist no. is not the same yeah. same sort of thing as spirit possession or demon possession no. it's not the same thing I so, I, I'll agree that it's a you know that the red mist as we as you know as you call it is is a mental disorder, but it's a different type of disorder that can be readily treated. Well, no, what just, we're talking about here is this one, but it's it not. Can't though, be. It's, it's, it's not even uh, the red, red mist isn't a mental disorder. It is a momentary loss of well, it's an anger conscious issue, control. It? So, it's, so it, but then that could. It has people have experienced it who have quite a placid life. They don't have any sort of anger management issues, but something happens and it triggers a red mist and like, you know, they beat, they, they've kicked the shit out of someone or something like that, and they haven't been able and to stop until they until and when they, they oh, when shit. they drop back into their body, as they yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. They go, oh shit, 
But that's, yeah, so yeah. that in itself is okay, just a momentary so yeah. sort of thing so rather just than a being a, a disorder. Trance or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like... Um, yeah, because it's not like an ongoing thing. It can just be a one-off. Yeah, it's, so not, it's not like a disorder our, per se. Exactly. Yeah, so it's not, okay. it's not that's in the same way as like um, William Ramsey from our Werewolves episode. He would have a red mist in which he would go completely blank and go into these flying rages yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, that was a recurring... Periodically. A recurring thing for as a, a disorder. Red so this... Yeah, what you're... Yeah, okay, I'll take it's that like back. It's like a crime of passion would be like... if So like, for instance, if you saw someone do something to your child mm. you'd fly into a red mist and you'd probably end up doing some serious damage to them and then yeah. when you come back and realise wow I've just done that mm. it, that momentary loss yeah. of momentary of yeah okay so it's more consciousness yeah so it's more based on the repeat or yeah if it's a one off or a recurring thing if it recurs that's the then difference, it becomes because that's disorder. where yeah, I guess that's where that becomes more vague then yeah because it's like okay so is that just once or is that reoccurring or is that yeah so that yeah that just makes it even more vague in that respect doesn't it, it does. yeah okay i'll take that back then yeah that makes sense um so yeah people um alleged to be possessed by spirits sometimes exhibit symptoms similar to um widely regarded mental illnesses as we would you know just sort of alluding to um these can include um but not limited to but not limited to <laughs> yeah um because, yeah, there's a, a whole list. I've just picked some of the more kind of popular, if you like. Um, oh, this one certainly but, does seem to be quite popular, the one oh, I've looked into. God, yeah. So, yeah, so these can include Tourette's, hysteria, catatonia, psychosis, epilepsy, schizophrenia, and mania. Um, sleep paralysis has sometimes been um, attributed to um, demon possession, but it is neither a mental or physical um, illness. But they basically say that it's the cause of a sort of demon possession that you suffer with sleep paralysis. Now, thankfully, I've never had it. <laughs> but no. um, again, like what we've covered in very in previous episodes, it does, um, you know, it, it does sound um, quite, uh, quite horrific, mm. really. Um, now... I mean, there's a couple of bits that I've looked into, like you know, like the sort of the, the shaman and and Wiccans and stuff. But I understand you come on to um, some of that yeah. anyway, don't you? In in your notes, so um, yeah, I'm happy to. Uh, okay, well, hand the reins over if you want to. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, yeah, I, the the one thing that I did go into and I've alluded to a few times, especially at the beginning of the episode, was I wanted to look into the idea of uh, DID. Yes. Now, anyone that is on TikTok or, or on the socials and any, everything else like that, with regards to the youths of today, <laughs> um, they seem to be pretending to have these various different mental illnesses. And DID or dissociative identity disorder mm. is one of those really interesting ones because it's, if anyone that's never heard of it before, you must have heard of multiple personality disorder or um, split personality syndromes yeah. or, or something along those lines. Basically what they've done is they've taken those various different names and they've brought it under one umbrella identity, which would be dissociative identity yeah, disorder. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Now, its definition is at least two distinct and relatively enduring personality states that occur again and again and again. And they are essentially very, very different. Now, yeah. what the person who may be suffering with this may experience is memory gaps beyond like, regular memory issues. So yeah. they go beyond things like... Um, um, Alzheimer's or yeah. or long term, short term memory loss that goes beyond those sort of things that have already yeah. got a solid diagnosis. Yeah, um, and they presumably these memory gaps happen when the other personality takes over. So it's a you, we yeah. we mentioned it before in the we last did. episode with yeah, regards yeah. to Moon Knight. Yeah. So again, it's that idea that <laughs> you know old Stephen Grant takes over. Yeah. And. Uh, um, Mark Spector. Mark Spector yeah. doesn't know what's happened and vice versa. Yeah. Um, although they take a more um, a, 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 a psychological aspect to that. But yeah. I think where the, like, Stephen's created to uh, the, mask trauma, which is something that yeah, comes yeah. up a lot in this. Yeah. So other conditions that can occur with people that, that have DID include um, PTSD, personalities disorder, 
personality disorders. So that's like borderline personality disorder or avoidant personality yeah. disorders, depression, substance use disorders, conversion disorders, which, which was something that I had never heard of before, which is a neurological issue where people experience numbness, blindness, paralysis, or they have like fits, um, but no ascertainable triggers. Like they just... Yeah. It just happens. Like you might just get Bang, numbness yeah. in in your foot or some or your right. hand or or something like that. Yeah. Um, somatic symptom disorder, which is the manifestation of um, physical illness. So, okay. like you might have like an issue with like your knee or something like that, and you've never had you, know, you never played football or uh, soccer to the rest of the world. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 but you know, you but you've had like. A, 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 an enduring issue with your knee mm. or something like that um, or IBS. Oh, wow. Okay. That sort of, that's one that that's comes up. IBS. Um, uh, eating disorders are also um, accompany people that have DID. Um, obsessive compulsive disorder. Now, I mean like the real OCD, not like the, I like things neat. Yeah, not like things neat and tidy. Yeah, yeah. Like not, not, not like... Monica Geller OCD. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about like the real painful sort the of stuff. Painful where, stuff. Yeah, you they know, have to like wash their hands in bleach six they, times a day, or, or they click like this, and they can't like stop that. clicking, and yeah. their hands are going yeah. like it's it's yeah. killing their hands, and they can't mm. stop doing it. Yeah. Um, other things that have come into it like sleep disorders, um, and self harm, non epileptic seizures, um, anxiety disorders, and suicidality are also very very common. Yeah. people that and that, that's a lot there's a, a lot and that's again a, any any of us i mean both of us i know and i'm sure people listening and, and watching can associate to at least a couple a few of those mm. and then you could be going down that i mean and suffering with those is bad enough but to then think oh i might actually have a, there might be a mental person, disorder or a, a, might actually be a yeah another personality within yeah, you that, that you don't recognize you're switching between because when you're having a good day that could be your I mean, this the, is the, it's the a, good personality or the other personality where you're, you know, chipper and it's on top of the world and whatever. And when you crash and hit rock bottom, it's when the other one takes over. And, yeah. Yeah. But if you if you never know or you know recognize the switch, you know, you could be sitting there thinking, Christ, have I got a bloody disorder, or was I just having, or do I just have bad days? Or yeah, exactly. It just makes it worse, doesn't it? I, I think, mean, the, the thing that I get really quite angry about with with regards to today and I've, I've made it very clear already is the whole TikTok thing it's the, it's the pretending to have something like this and oh, it, it reduces it for people that actually do pretending like they've got a tick do experience this or on a date or something oh, exactly. and you, you see know. them and like they, they use, because they think it's funny to shout out swear words and, and like Sort of like making like noises or like, <laughs> and then you know sort of a little twick and a yes, twitch and that was funny. <laughs> it wasn't meant to be, but <laughs> Did Donald come out there. It's Donald within you. <laughs> but yeah, it's like I've seen I've like, seen a few on. of them where like you know they've you know they've been, they've managed to capture a switch in personalities on camera that like they've been able to. Do. Yeah, I saw. Like that. They might be absolutely fine like this. So uh, talking, no, they it would just be like this, and then they suddenly go. Yeah, I did. And it's just, no, no, you just changed your face. You sort of look over to the side and then look back at the camera, and yeah. it's like it's there's been a switch. Else, like, or, yeah. Fuck or, off, drop me out. Behave. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just stop it's it. Just, it's, uh, and uh, yeah, don't get me wrong. I think it's good to an extent that it's been popularised in terms of like talking about it and you know bringing it you know to the forefront. And you know you've got all the you know the woke nonsense, I guess to. You know, to partly that thank problem, for that. Though. So that is part of the the good thing. But it's the it's it's the, the the whole woke mentality that you know you've just got to accept fucking everything and everyone, and it's got to be cool and it's got to be trendy and it's like you know you you can't you know you can't fit in to like the whole woke movement unless you've unless you've got a label. A label, yeah. even if it's that you don't have a label, <laughs> that yeah. in itself is a label. So it's just like, you know, it's just so I, I, I'm, I'm kind of at, at kind of war with it. Part of me thinks well, it's good that people are actually wanting to talk about mental health and bring it to the forefront and use a social media like TikTok to, you know, kind of do it. But they're doing it in the wrong way. Like if you've generally got one and you want to share it, then great, do that. Yeah. And I, you know, and I applaud it. 
but it's all these t- little shit woke kids who are like, yeah, pretending to have ticks and the generations there. twitches and you know Tourette's and all these other like you know disorders. I mean, we went through the emo phase. Do you know what I mean we can sp- <laughs> yeah. we can spot fake emotions? <laughs> where, <laughs> yes, we can. With a you know, just because you've got a long fringe and you paint your nails black, it doesn't mean you're depressed. Like <laughs> no. So it's like you know, you, and it's and yeah, it's as you say, it's it's yeah. mostly that platform. Hmm. Um, I mean, I'm not on it, but annoyingly, you can't be on any of the others without seeing links to TikTok. So that's exactly, where all the, yeah. or they're even on YouTube now. So it's like you can't even mm-hmm. like you know, sort of escape it, pop so. up. it. That's pretty much where I've seen it. I'm not on TikTok. I've, that's I've it, got yeah. no real time. To it's get the on it, reels but. or whatever where I see them. It's yeah, like exactly. the 30 second segments or whatever. Of the issue with the whole wokeism thing, really, is that everything needs to be compartmentalized, everything has mm. to have. A, a place so you've got I mean, to have yeah, a label yeah. for this part labeled, of you yeah. or that part of you and and you know it's it's become a thing now where you you can't there's no sort of accountability for yourself so people feign these mental disorders because they don't want to take accountability yeah. for themselves and the actions that they do so they go oh it's my mental illness yeah no Grow the fuck up, get a job, <laughs> and start stop stop being a person. Yeah. You know, is like stop trying to blame external factors. Sort of find stuff to blame. Yeah, exactly. You know, and and it's I mean, all- we all have our afflictions, and we all have our stuff going on. I mean, you and I have you know spoken fairly openly about you know previous bouts with you know depression and you know anxiety and, and mm. other stuff. So we we don't take any of this lightly and i think that's probably why we get quite passionate about it oh definitely is, yeah is because you know you, you just deal with it like you know i mean you know that a particular movement is getting bad when people suddenly stop hating vegans <laughs> do you know what i mean when there's a <laughs> when there's a when there's a new thing to hate you know it's got bad i mean there, there's always the check you know stop hating you, you, vegan. Yeah. Well, consciously you mean consciously yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> You know, when it's you know, when it's like you know, I don't, put, you know, just to put it out there, oh, I couldn't okay. care less. Yeah, sure, but, all right. No, but it's yeah, like that whole, like, it's that whole joke, you know. Of, um, you know, you'll always know someone's a vegan because they'll tell you. They'll always tell you. <laughs> it's just true. Yeah, or, or you know, um, you never, you know, you're never more than six feet away from a vegan, or you know, and all that thing. Because <laughs> like, you'll hear them. Because <laughs> you'll hear them. Yeah, all that kind of thing. Yeah, when when there's a new, you know, when, when a new thing a has new been introduced thing. that everyone collectively hates. And that's- that is exactly what this seems to be. And that's what this seems to be. Yeah. And you, so you know it's bad. If it's, you know, if yeah. it's just a minority that hates it, then you can think, oh, okay, it's, you know, it's just them. But, mm. you know, when there seems to be quite a collective, I don't get me wrong, people can be what they want, who they want, love who they want. Do you know what? Crack on. Could not care less. Yeah. Just don't be a dick. <laughs> that's our number one rule. Like, that's, just the, that's just the rule. Just don't be a dick. That's- so don't, like, shout out about it. Okay, you, you don't, you don't want to identify as... Like whatever, fine, great. Don't that's your choice. Just don't be a dick. Don't just don't make it my problem. <laughs> don't be a dick. <laughs> yeah, don't be a dick. Yeah, but yeah, we do digress yet again. That's what we do. Third time, fourth time. Know, I must count. I know it's, it's <laughs> but yeah, it's what we do. Um, so, so yeah, I've gone through the um, the, the the more so medical version of of DID and and its explanation. Now, what I'm going to go through is the other aspect of it. So the more spiritual side of it. The the, I suppose, shamanic side of it all. And I came across this article that was dated like February 2015. It doesn't have an author, but I found it on uh, sacredstream.org. I just came across right. it and it seems it's quite an interesting one to, to go through. Now, I won't go through all of it, but I'll just give you the cliff notes. Um, but I'll start off with um, what it says on here. And as we've seen, there are many paths to self-knowledge understanding the self is a complex process because the self is so complex there are many facets to our being which our conscious mind awareness generally blocks out now that could be down to things like it's a simple thing of like we can't see our own nose Mm. so our conscious mind blocks things like that out that's just like the everyday sort of things but also right. our conscious mind will block out experiences that we've had so like for instance there are people that have had experiences where they remember being born 
mm. and stuff like this, yeah. or they they remember being in the womb, yeah. or they have memories of those that you know our conscious mind actually goes, yeah, yeah that's not important. I can't remember being in work on Friday. Never mind. <laughs> Tell <laughs> me about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, maybe <laughs> need to get a, a whole Callum. <laughs> then maybe that's what it is. <laughs> oh, don't. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm not here to diagnose you. Definitely not. That's not. That's not my uh, perspective. It's not your forte. <laughs> no. So um, it must do it must do this in order to deal with the very com- like com- complicated external world that we negotiate on a daily basis. Yeah. The creation like, of a vehicle from which to explore the external world is one of the primary tasks we have to accomplish as part of our development. Right. For many of us, this development is not as linear or logical as we would like to believe. Which is true. Mm. I think. I think. I think is a life isn't just like a straight line. It's you've got to get from A to B, but you've got you do have to go all the way out to, to Z and back yeah, again. Yeah, okay. Sometimes in order to get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the chaos is around every corner, and if we cannot find like a, a home base in the conscious mind, right, from which we experience this world, generally speaking, this chaos is due to the amount of trauma that we experience at any point in our development. So yeah, okay. it's the idea that um, yeah. there are cracks and and gaps that form within our conscious psyche that create these various kind of a, yeah, issues. Sort of weaknesses in the wall, I guess, yeah. that you, we kind of allow, that they're suggesting is what allows these other things, mm. to, whether it be kind of spirits, personalities, psyches, whatever. Entities, whatever yeah. it may be. It, that's what allows them to kind of find their their kind of way in, I guess. Yeah. Is that, that's what it's kind Absolutely, of... Absolutely, right, yeah. Okay, it's, cool. So it says you've got the, the manifestations of the multiplicity or, or dissociation interfere with our ability to develop a stable base to begin to understand ourselves on a soul level. So... Okay. Again, it's, it's the idea that, you know, because we've got these gaps, it allows something in and it, it stops you from um, from making a, like an FOB, a forward operating base, you know, to go forward, right, okay, this is where I need to go. So it's almost like the idea of like procrastination. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Christ. We all, we all bloody have, know how to do that. I'd have a degree in that. So uh, DID has only recently been re recognized um within the field of modern like psychology and when freud's theories like reign supreme it was mostly misdiagnosed as schizophrenia yeah you know um he was always asking about your relationship with your mother and all that sort of stuff oh god right. <laughs> and was it sexual <laughs> fucking no. hell um, right. was that his thing was it that was that was his right, thing everything okay. was to do with your mum and oh god like, it, it was a weird himself, sort of sexual like an Oedipus complex sort of everything was to do with oh, right, okay. sex with your mum or something yeah a light, so, a light reading. That's a reductionist pr- review of it. I was going to say, that's quite, it seems like quite a brutal, <laughs> even for layman's terms, that seemed quite... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm simplifying it a lot. <laughs> but that's kind of... A lot of cliff notes on that one. Kind of where it is. But yeah, do your own research on that one, guys. <laughs> yeah, please do. Yeah. <laughs> but in um, in 1980s, the APA... Um, not the acolytes, dun, dun. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. <laughs> not the acolytes dun, protection dun. agency. Oh right, okay. but the American Psychological Association, right, gotcha. the APA, okay. officially reestablished the legitimacy of multiple personality disorders and defined a separate diagnostic diagnostic uh, category for DID. Basically, so right in okay. 1980, they actually said, right, okay, this is actually something we need to is separate yeah, from right. Like schizophrenia, from schizophrenia because, and stuff. Yeah. Well, schizophrenia, from what I understand, is is well, it's not voices split and, personalities, is it? Yeah, that's more just a an effect on your own personality. You're exactly. not introducing multiple, are you? Is that right? That's right. Yeah. So with, with regards to schizophrenia, from what I understand, um, there's no like memory br- memory gaps where something else has taken mm. over. With schizophrenia, there are audible and visual hallucinations in which right. you know, like the, the voice has told me to do it. That sort of thing, like the like the the radio is actually talking directly to you. It's, to you, right? You know, okay. Rather than something else um, effectively coming in and taking over your behaviour. Right. Okay. 
you know, yeah, you okay. you are still in charge of your behaviour, but the voices are telling you to do it. But you're, you're right, okay. Yeah, and yeah. you've got so to make, being... in order to make them stop, you do it. Right, yeah. You know, okay. schizophrenia yeah, is kind of like having children. <laughs> you, you do do it just to make the voices stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you right. know? I know the truth. Yeah. You know, just give them ice cream just to make them stop. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Digress again. <laughs> Digress again. <laughs> um, so the phenomenon of like vastly divergent personalities isn't necessarily a, a new concept either. So which, you know, you said before, is something that goes back oh. way far. Like the the multiplicity is commonly understood by shamanic, shamanic practitioners mm. as a type of soul loss or a spirit possession, like I said before. Yeah. The essential aspects of the shamanic healing – Across all cultures, really, this is something that's quite interesting. It's, it, the shamanic part of it is connected across all these various different cultures. It is the shaman's journey in search of these lost soul parts. So, when they've got someone who they've essentially diagnosed as you, you're missing this part of your soul or that part of your soul, I need to do this in order to bring it back to you, so that you can be whole again. Um, right. There was a there was a book that came out. It's called The Way of the Shaman, and it was written by Michael Herner, and he did a lot of extensive research into the various different shamanic cultures. And he reports that it has been understood in almost all pre-industrial societies that a person's physical illness or erratic behaviour often has its roots in a loss of a central part of oneself. The illness can sometimes be aggravated by a subsequent use of that lost life energy by non-corporeal spirits. This loss can be compounded by the facts that trauma, which is often a triggering event for soul loss, can also allow uh, the entry of spirits into a person's uh, psychic space or like your aura or something like that. This can then play havoc with the individual's mental and physical health. It is generally recognised that soul loss takes place due to some kind of mental, physical or spiritual trauma. Right. It is the shaman's duty to find the lost soul parts and restore them to the individual. He okay. Then, so okay, yeah. sorry, go on. Yeah, he then performs a specific type of healing, such as a depossession or extraction, not an exorcism. I was just going to say, it's almost like the opposite, where an exorcism is trying to get rid of something. These guys are trying to do the opposite by bringing something back. Exactly. So actually try and heal by bringing a part of you that was lost yeah. sort of back, whereas an exorcism is just concentrating on or concerned with just getting rid of whatever it is about you that's... yeah that's evil or wrong or Absolutely. kind of whatever. It's like... Um, it's just like the yin and yang of... <laughs> I, I see the perfect metaphor is like trying to bail the water out of the boat without fixing the hole. Yeah. You're trying to get the water out yeah, of it, yeah. but the, the, the still, holes and the cracks still are sinking. still there. Yeah, yeah. So the shamanic approach to it is, okay, well, let's put some polyfiller in that. Yeah. You know, let's let's plug the hole and then we're going to sort out whatever's, yeah. whatever's in you and get rid of it. Identifying the yeah, weaknesses and then trying to locate... Which is a far more pragmatic yeah. approach than uh, yeah. trying to bail well, all that seems, water out. And... Seems far more gentler than, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, it, it, that, that in itself, I think, is probably the the, the better approach, really. Yeah. Um, and like I said before, as well, so the, the, the refusal to include the idea of spirits in the, the scientific world, like view, um, is very unscientific mm. in itself. Yeah. Um, so the scientist, so a scientist does. They're not supposed to just reject any possibility out of hand without like careful observation or experimentation. Right. So if they've not done that, yeah, then they haven't taken an, a scientific approach to the idea of the spirit world or spirit entities out mm. there that could have an effect on yeah. us. It's maybe that's something that they really do need to do. Mm. So along with the failure yeah, to yeah. recognise or attempt to even understand the nature of spirits within Western healing methodology, it is a failure to recognise the existence of the soul. Yeah, okay. And I that is something that, yeah. that and if, if, if you don't recognise the soul, then there's no map, which would include like the entire nature of an individual's experience. So, okay. it, again, it comes down to that idea of relativity as well. So, 
your reality is different from mine mm. and our reality is different from theirs. Yeah, yeah. You know, so everyone experiences their reality in a subjective way. That's why people that do subscribe to the more spiritual side of things believe that there is one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively mm. within all of us. Um, I'm not too sure I believe that part of it. Mm. Um, but modern science definitely needs to look into the idea of there being a soul to get a full mapping of someone's individual experience. Yeah. I think they Makes really sense. do need to because yeah. um, like there are, there are, there are memories that people have that arise from various different things. So like I said, including the experience of the womb, um, or there's even like past life memories and, and stuff like that. Or yeah, they're cr they're crazy. The the past life ones, or even experiences um, between lives in other realities. Oh, you know. Okay. So there are there are lots of stories out there of um, children that have um, experienced a place between lives. So there's um, there's been loads of studies on it. And it's it's quite strange that there are so many children across the world in all these various different Especially cultures kids as well, yeah. that, ex, that ex, um, describe the same thing. And they basically describe it as what they call the waiting room. You know, so uh, there have been the, – the, the general gist of it all is that the kids will say something to like their mum with like, oh, when I chose you, I chose you because I saw you when I was wait in the waiting room. And I thought, I'll go with that one. You know, so – and – it's not just like the odd outlier here and there. There's thousands of these stories. Wow, yeah. So I guess even that in itself, and I guess that's the point of the article, mm. is a possession, but more down the line of the spiritual, obviously as opposed, as opposed to demonic, which is you know generally regarded as being like evil. Yeah. This is obviously, I guess, would be more of the yeah, well, spiritual I mean, side. Well, it, if, if they're choosing to pick mm. a vessel or a well there is puppet. the general census is that there are uh, three different types of entities um you've got like human entities dark forces entities which would be the demonic and then you've got extraterrestrial entities right um i don't i don't, I don't really think it's along the lines of like little gray aliens or anything like that or little green men yeah or anything like that but something that doesn't exist on this earth sort of thing um and it, it, Michael Harner defines the three worlds as well. Like I said before, you've got the the upper world, the middle world, and the lower world. Again, it's okay. the heaven, yeah. earth, and hell yeah. sort of thing. And these worlds are populated by almost uncountable numbers of entities. Some are helpers and right. archetypal figures, for which Jung is the best translator in Western psychology. So the Jungian sort of idea of the various different archetypes that there are out there. Right that you know if you were to take if you were to take the more psychological sort of route and didn't really necessarily believe in the actual existence of it but believed yeah. in the archetype of it then that also could actually help you, you right know? okay no, because it's again it's it's understanding the stories and parables that we've told over campfires for countless eons you know about this story or that story and and what this character ended up knowing about themselves can actually awaken that same sort of thoughts and feelings within yourself as well. Ultimately yeah. bringing yourself into a whole being. So it's okay. about realization of various different parts of yourself. So self discovery, isn't it really? And yeah. So according to, to this particular model, um, most of the spirits which are causing problems in a person's psyche inhabit only the middle world. So again, it's not it's okay. a world that we exist on, but we can't really um uh, we can't interact with it purposefully because we our existence, like I said before, is in such a, a, a narrow frame of existence. So right. we can only see so much light, we can only feel so many vibrations, we can only hear certain frequencies taste and light it's all it's a very right. very narrow okay window of frequency that we can actually experience because of 
this meat machine. <laughs> They're meat puppets. Yeah, that... meat puppets that <laughs> have various different sensors on them and yeah, such. Yeah. So these spirits are defined by uh, William uh, Baldwin, who, again, was another author in this sort mm. of field. The spirits of the upper or lower worlds are understood to be more helpful and more powerful. The shamanic practitioner can call upon upper and lower world spirits from uh, with whom he established a relationship to like, for help. So right. the shaman is there to actually interact with these spirits on a daily basis mm. in order to call upon their help. Yeah. To you know, because uh, for instance, um, say you've got um, a spirit that's possessing you. That's particularly stubborn. Yeah. And <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> sounds about right there. I, I, cho- I, feel, I feel attacked. I mean, that, that was deliberate. Was a Freudian slip right there. Yeah, it? right. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I feel attacked. That was deliberate. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I can neither confirm nor deny. But you're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I think I'll leave it there. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so the, the, the shaman might need a little bit more than just drawing that spirit out. Mm. It might need a little something else to go, right, okay, Dave. <laughs> Give us a hand, and Dave will go. Fucking pull you out, yeah. right? You're good. That sort of thing, you know. Like you, right. you may okay. use a spirit to draw out or Your extract spirit. Yeah. a spirit that came that is attached to you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they they can help with uh, the depossession of, of troubling spirits and help the client begin to process back to um, integration and wholeness. Now, Western psychology has its um, has very few interventions which address the issue of spirit possession, which we've already discussed. It does have a set of exhaustive descriptions of external phenomena associated with DID and various other uh, um, personality disorder type states, right. which, as we've seen, are very similar to those that associated with spirit possession. Mm-hmm. And it does use some mind-altering drugs, just to some effect, and therapy as well. Therapy can help with it. Okay. But seemingly, it doesn't have as well as a strike rate as the shamanic approach. Seemingly. Interesting. Have a look at it yourselves, guys. But that's certainly something that I've looked into. So basically, it's suggesting there that the the sort of the the cure or whatever to this whole um, kind of you know losing part of your soul or, or whatever mm. is more spiritual in the sense than relying on medicines and you know medications yeah. to make the correction. It's actually relying on these shamanic. Practices. Absolutely, yeah. I'm th- okay. I think as well because in it's a lot of cases, the various the, the actual medication side of it is often misprescribed. So, having having been on antidepressants before mm. myself, I found that they didn't work. They, if anything, they actually made me worse, and I did have memory gaps. When I was on, um, I had uh, citalopram for a little while and fluoxetine. When I was on fluoxetine. I had an entire morning at work, which is I still don't have back. Wow. And I mean that mind you, that was like that was 2012, maybe end of 2011, um, but certainly into 2012. And yeah, it was it was when I was working at Toyota. And I was okay. And yeah. It was, yeah. With the, the new Yaris was coming out. Yeah, yeah. And we actually had a presentation in the morning, and yep, don't remember it. It's gone. <laughs> right. I was wow. there. I know okay. I was there. I remember getting there and I remember, I mean, well, I, mean I even remember my, my boss saying to me, you're right. <laughs> we, we, we covered that in, in the presentation this morning. And I went, what presentation this morning? You were there. I don't remember a presentation, but I also, that's bad. Um, on Citalopram, I had higher anxiety and I had more <laughs> suicidal thoughts, which, and then when I read the label, it actually said one of the side effects to this antidepressant is suicidal tendencies. Helpful. <laughs> they would have thought it. Yeah. But the the, the idea from what I understand with regards to antidepressants is that they're supposed to be prescribed with a tranquilizer. 
because if it is a genuinely a, a chemical imbalance within you, then the tranquilizer is supposed to put everything at a base level and a reset then, almost. And then the antidepressants are supposed to bring that balance back to where it's supposed to be, supposedly. Um, okay. But yeah, so the idea is that when you someone's got an issue and you just got to keep giving them medication, it doesn't work. It's like it's bailing the mm. water out without yeah. fixing the holes. Just sort of paper over, paping over the cracks, as it were. Yeah, just yeah, just putting paper yeah. over the cracks, and the cracks are still going to come through. Yeah, you know, it's never actually going to be truly fixed. Yeah. Um, so, but what I've got here as well is um, the the following that that's coming up next is recreated, excerpted um, transcripts from two different cases of uh, spirit depossession. Now, in the first case, the client was aware of a, a, a physical block that he had in his abdomen. Um, and it was giving him like considerable considerable pain, and he was also diagnosed with IBS. Now, he was also experiencing a block within his life as well. So, from from a, a personal and a professional point of view, in which he was afraid to go on to like new ventures, and yeah. he he wasn't he was incredibly fearful, and even his partner expressed concern at what he called. Um, a personality change as well. So there was a big change in, in this personality. Um, now, a psychologist is uh, trained that is trained in Western um, psychotherapeutic paradigm might recognize a spirit manifestation of an altar or fragment of the original personality. Right. So that's usually the uh, the the Western medical side of it that they will just see it as a fragmentation of that person's personality that's coming off and doing something else. However, the the shamanic sort of perspective is that it is a different entity, a different spirit that is within them. Right. So um, it starts off with the the um, therapist. Yeah, as uh, as you breathe in. And the pain in your abdomen, breathe into the pain in your abdomen. Just allow any words, images, or sounds to emerge as you breathe out. So he does, and what comes out is, come and get me. So he asks, come and get who? Come and get me. Who is here? I am. Who are you? I am the protector. Who do you protect? George, who's the client. What do you protect him from? Pain. How do you do that? I catch pain and I uh, make it into tiny balls. And how does that protect him from pain? Well, it doesn't seem to protect him very well at all. What do you mean? There is so much pain and I can't make the balls tiny enough and they are all gathering up here in this place. I don't know what to do. And it says at this point, the spirit seems to be quite distressed. So how long have you been helping George in this way? Since before he was born. How do you connect with him? I came with him into this life because I knew that there was going to be a lot of pain and I wanted to protect him, but I can't do my job. There is too much pain and I can't make it small enough. Well, wow. <laughs> that's quite something that. Um, how would it be if you could let George feel his pain and process it differently. So well, that would hurt him. But this block in his stomach is also hurting him. Sadly, the, the, the so the spirit says, this is true. Um, I've not done my job very well. And do you think it's possible that no one can do the job of protecting another person from pain? And the spirit replies, I thought I could. And the therapist then says, you may have thought you could, and certainly your intentions seem very kind, but do you think it's possible that everyone has to deal with their own pain? And he says, well, I can't deal with George's pain, that's for sure. There are too many little balls. How would you like to, to go to a place where you can learn about how to deal with pain in a new way? And the spirit replies, that would be a good idea. I'm not doing any good dealing with it in, 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 in this way. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you would like to say to George before you go? And the spirit says, sorry, I failed you. I, would only, I was only trying to help. 
And then is there anything you would like to say to the protector before he goes, George? And George says, it's okay. Thank you for trying. I know I have to deal with my own pain. Yeah. And maybe I didn't want to. Wow. So the therapist says, George, you may feel a draining sensation for a while. Just let me know when it stops. Now, protector, please find your attention being drawn to the light that is here all around you and notice that there is any that there is any particular notice if there is any particular energy pattern or entity which seems familiar to you. And the spirit says, Yeah, there is something that seems familiar, and then eventually goes to the light. Now, after about five minutes, George reported to a shift in like a draining sensation that he had in his body. And after this, they they spent a bit of time with George, helping him connect with his own life energy in a new way. So having to deal with the pain that he is actually experiencing and not try and push it to the side. Right. Now, this is an important part of all depossession work. If the client is not filled with life energy after the spirit has left, he will sense the hollowness and may be susceptible to further intrusion as he seeks to fill the holiness. Well, hollowness, sorry, not holiness. Hollowness. Oh, hollowness, right. Hollowness. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, again, it's that hole being there and, you know, allowing something else to come in because you haven't plugged it. You need to, yeah, yeah. Or anything okay. like that. Um, Apparently, after this session, George was able to begin to explore some deep emotional blocks through hypnosis. And within six months, the symptoms of IBS had disappeared and he was working at a new job. He also reported that he felt more energized and alive than he'd ever had in many, many years. That's mad, isn't it? It's crazy. And that's, that's, that in itself is not an outlier or anything like that. Now, you could look at that and say, okay, there's a real sort of psychological aspect to it all that, you know, he's realized that he has to actually take the responsibility to deal with the issues that he's gone through and, mm. and face the trauma that he's got to. But also, <laughs> I don't know, is, is your physical reality manifesting a spiritual reality from your yeah, mental or spiritual that allows reality, yeah. things to come in and, and yeah. do things, you know, it make you seems to suggest that doesn't it? Yeah. From just from that case alone, which, which in itself, I mean, that's a, that's an odd one as well, because the, clearly there was a spirit in there that was trying to do good, but was actually doing hurting other, him. Yeah. Is actually causing him more pain. Which is mostly what we do to ourselves. Absolutely. You know, you do something with the best intentions and you end up making something worse than what you intended. Yeah. So it just seems to be, and as you say, then that's maybe a, a physical manifestation of what your spirit is trying to do, what your soul is trying yeah. to do, trying to fix itself, but in turn it's making things worse. Mm. And so we then manifest that in a physical way, however, yeah. you know, however we choose to. I mean, that one in itself, that that doesn't necessarily seem like it's um, a, a spirit of a person that's been deceased or anything like that, but part of his spirit or, or, it's, or maybe an external entity that's come in and, and, you know, seen the holes and gone, right, let me try and fix that, you know, with the best of intentions. Yeah. Yeah. But it's actually, like we said, it's caused more issues. Yeah. And in like all it's taken was the realization of, Oh, actually I am causing more issues. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, this is like they've reduced it. You know, this is, these are the cliff notes of the oh, yeah, session. Of course, yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know. And was this just a, like a sit-down sort of session like, you know, what you would expect in any kind of Western sort of psychiatry office or did, yeah. did, this, did this implement any of the shamanic part of the ritual well, in terms of plugging those gaps or – well, it doesn't go into those sort of details. It doesn't go into oh, okay. the details as to exactly what sort of energy work is, is done in order to, to plug right. those gaps. But um, it's certainly a form of hypnotic regression that is going on mm. with these sessions. And yeah, that's what I it's the idea of the, 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 the conscious mind being taken a back seat mm. and then the subconscious coming through and allowing things to, yeah. to, to come to the surface, mm. um, which is wholly the, the point of hypnotism yeah and not to get you up up on stage yeah. jerking around like a, like a chicken or something yeah. like that you know yeah, yeah. um is it's it's a form of therapy that really should just be 
should just be that. Should yeah. just be that. Yeah. Rather than it being like a stage show or anything like yeah. that. Um I've got another session here with um Michael, um, who had been a drug addict for, for many years. He had been clean for about six years, but he had said that he didn't really believe in spirits or the possibility of of possession. But he had said he'd always felt like there was just something around him. Like that's the words that he uses, mm. that there's something around him. Um, so this is a, 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 a condensed transcript of, of one of the sessions. Right. Um, the, the therapist asks, is there anyone here with Michael? No. And there's a, a, a strong twitching to his left side of Michael's body. Is there anyone here with Michael? No. And the, the, the twitching gets a little bit stronger. And so what is your name? And what is your name? Anthony. Anthony? And he goes, Anthony, what are you doing here? So where am I? You are here with Michael. Who is Michael? <laughs> he is the person you are with. So I'm not with anyone. I'm here. Where am I? You are in California. <laughs> and he says, what is California? Which is an interesting one. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he says, look at this mirror. Hands the mirror or puts the mirror over Michael. So is this you, Anthony? This is not me. Who is this person? This is Michael. Well, what am I doing here? That is what I want to know. What is happening? And he says, Anthony, you're dead. Is it? No, <laughs> no, no. Oh, I'm not dead. Anthony, you are dead, but you are among friends. Don't worry. Just relax. We can help you. Think back to the last time that you were talking to someone like this. And Anthony says, my head hurts. So, well, what's happening? It's very dark and my head hurts. So why does your head hurt? So, well, it hurts here. Points to the back of his head. And it's very dark. I think something hit me. Is, is it possible that you've left your body when you got hit? So I don't know. But Anthony, you are dead. I said, no, no. And he's like, he starts holding his head. He's like, oh, my head. Anthony, do you notice a light that's within the room? So yeah, he directs him toward the light and he says, is there anyone that you recognize there? And he recognizes his father. So he asks him, would you like to go to your father? And uh, essentially that's what happens. It's the idea of... It coaches him to... Coaches him to walk through the light right. sort of thing. I know it's a bit of a cliche sort of thing, like we've, what we've poltergeist the movie and, and all that. You know, <laughs> Come into the light! Yeah. <laughs> all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But... It seems like that is actually... There's a strong belief in... That's the general practice what happens, yeah. ...sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, the, the, you know, eventually Anthony does go into the light and so the, the therapist says, Michael, you may feel the training sensation. Please let me know when it stops. And it goes on to say that this session was quite a bit longer than, you know, this. Um, they spent a bit more time establishing the circumstances around Anthony's life and the way in which he died and how he had become involved with Michael's energy. Right. Now, from what he deduced from this was that this was a confused spirit who had been attracted to Michael's life energy, probably while Michael, Michael was not fully in control of his life energy because of the drug use. Right. Now, this is something that has come up a lot with regards to various different... Like if you are intoxicated and you are your conscious physical mind is not at the forefront. Right. Essentially it, it creates little gaps and cracks that right. allow something to get in. Now, interestingly, Michael reported that one of the reasons he had actually ended up going down the, the route of heavy drug use was to escape confusion. He was so confused about his life and where he's supposed to be going and what he was supposed to be doing that as we know, addiction is actually an escapism. It's not. Um, it's not down to a single. Uh, there are substances that are addictive, but addiction itself is a completely different nature. In that yeah. it is purely about escapism. I know that myself. I got addicted to computer games. Yeah. 
and then that was for me that was my escapism from life and and no, yeah, definitely, me yeah. not having to deal with the situation that I was in yeah, um, so this the, I mean this definitely hits home with me mm. absolutely um and there was probably a uh, vibrational match with the two energies that yeah. created that confusion allowed them right. to merge um and again some time was spent connecting michael to his life energy in the places where anthony had been using it um in the weeks after the session michael reported that he no longer felt any uh, any sort of confusion or that there was something around him um but both of these manif manifestations of spirit possession could have been recognized and defined within the terms and paradigms used by psychologists and other social scientists. Now, it is important to define the different ways in which the imbalance called spirit possession in this case and possibly uh, DID in, in, you know, by Western uh, psychologists, yeah. um, the there is a connection between them in which they both manifest seemingly in the symptoms and the, the way in which these uh, essentially they're, they're able to help the client or, yeah. or the patient. But right. it is important to note that both of these paradigms, um, sorry, but it is, is just as important not to allow these paradigms to interfere in the clinical setting. Oh, okay. It is easy to get lost in the definitions without progressing toward uh, resolution for the client. Mm. It is too easy to try and place a structural paradigm on the client's symptoms just to ease the mind of the practitioner. Yeah, so okay. that's interesting. It's not saying that either one is correct. Mm. But certainly, but both together go hand. The to goal hand. needs to be yeah. fixing the client. You can't worry too much about diagnosing the issue and then leaving it. You've got to diagnose the issue, recognize it, and then implement the relevant fix it fixation. and then implement it. Yeah, okay. You know, that so it's yeah. it's the idea that you know drugs don't work. No, you know, it's just by themselves, it doesn't work. Therapy doesn't work just by itself. No, maybe there needs to be a multifaceted approach. Combination to, of the two, maybe to these various different yeah. uh, mental disorders. Yeah, that across the board, not just DID, but across the board, that would actually benefit the people that are suffering with these symptoms. Yeah, makes sense. Mm. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, because yeah, the the meds didn't work. You know, for me, yeah, and I didn't go into like therapy or whatever. So it makes you wonder if the two had been combined, would that have yeah. helped quicker or easier than absolutely? Just I mean, coming off the meds cold turkey, and well, the thing is, I tried going down the NHS route with it, um, mm. and they they sent me over to uh, cognitive behavioural therapy, which is no better than a barely educated counsellor mm. that tells you just think differently. Yeah, you know that's that's pretty yeah, much yeah. their approach to it was just, just think, think differently, differently. Yeah. which all oh, right, okay, yeah, sure, I'll just think. Well, you, so you, you got, got anything else to offer on that? And nine no, times out of ten, they no, yeah. no, didn't have anything to offer because they're not formally educated. What's well, so up when you say you you're anxious? And someone said, "Well, just don't worry about it." I would never thought of it like that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. 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 it's like Peter Griffin, isn't it? The family Guy, the first episode. <laughs> oh, you know, I've, you know, I shouldn't be here drinking too much or anything. Like my wife wouldn't be happy about it. Oh, don't feel bad about it, Peter. Oh, I never thought of it like that. <laughs> yes, I drink yeah. some more then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, it's that, kind that of is thing, yeah. that is the approach yeah. to like the, the, the low level yeah, yeah. NHS that we've got. Yeah. And I had to wait months in order to get to that stage. Yeah. And then that's when I was like, right, okay. Sort For this. me, yeah. it was the realisation that I needed to sort it, but the only person that could sort it was me. Yeah. That was my realisation. Yeah, that was mine as well. Like I was on the meds for a couple of months or whatever and didn't really feel much kind of better. But I, I think it was a placebo because it made, it made me kind of feel like I was in more mm. control and actually I wasn't. But the anxiety was still there. And, you know, if anything, it was worse because then it was, when it was happening, I was thinking to myself, well, it shouldn't be happening because of the meds, but it is happening. Yeah. So that was it. That was increasing the level of anxiety. So as you said earlier, you know, it kind of made it worse. And then all those thoughts and that were, you know, were creeping in. Um, which you know is never great, and you know it was at that point that I thought, "Hang about, this ain't right." Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> I absolutely. need to, you know, I, I need to do something here because I thought, "What well, if I can recognise it?" Then, then I know, then I knew, okay, 
I shouldn't be thinking like that. This is a problem. And then that's when I sort about doing it yeah. like on my own. So I took myself off the like the meds mm. after like three months, I think it was. Like so I went like cold turkey, but essentially and just thought, right, now I know what I'm what not what the causation was, but now I know what the issues are in terms of what I'm feeling now. Mm. I can kind of concentrate on those. You can see those cut, and, those cracks and and, yeah. and holes and everything else in, yeah. in your in your being, mm. in your existence. Yeah. And you know how to deal with them now. That's, that's, I certainly recognise the, the lesson signs. That's need to be when, learned. It, when it starts to happen again, I can recognise the signs mm. and I think, oh, hold on a minute, and you know, I need to take a step back or you know, reevaluate sort of certain things. So it's it's helped in that respect, but it hasn't cured it in the sense that I don't feel those things again. Yeah. So it's a, it's like it's, it's just I'm better prepared now. I guess. Yes. I think it comes down to the society that we live in as well, because at the moment everything is we all look to external factors in order to make our lives better and yeah. the, everyone seems to know that everyone seems to know their rights but no one seems to understand their responsibilities yeah and you've got responsibilities to yourself yeah, yeah as well and if you don't understand the responsibilities to yourself and how to make yourself whole then you're never going to be whole yeah. and you're never going to be able to to deal with things in in a productive manner yeah you know, so mm. you there are there is help out there. There is help to be to be had. Oh, yeah, definitely. But it's not going to be the magic button that fixes you. No, but it will it, set you on the path towards that. You got to give you the tools to do it. You got to fix yourself, but and yeah. that's you got to figure where, it out. Yeah, that's where if we take everything that we've spoken about today, all the various different aspects of it all, and you can bring it all together, mm. and you can make it work for yourself. Yeah, that is the ultimate goal, because. I yeah. know, and I'm I know, still trying. <laughs> I know in myself. I know in myself. I've I've certainly become very, very spiritual in my thoughts and beliefs and, and yeah. everything else. So I very much do subscribe to the things that I have mm. that I presented today, and I found that it actually really does help me. And I I do subscribe to them, but I also take the more scientific approach to it. So I do read those medical journals about these sort of things about depression, anxiety, and other various different issues that people may be experiencing with their mental health. Yeah. And uh, uh, attaching the more shamanic side of it as well to yeah. it. And for me, certainly for me, it seems to work. Yeah. And I think it might be worth anyone else that's out there that is experiencing these various different things, look at it from all different angles. Mm. And I think that yeah. is the way in which you're going to really be able to help yourself. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't invest in a lot of it yet because I'm still, you know, sort of a newbie to it um, in terms of the, the spirituality and, mm -hmm. and, you know, spiritual side of things. But yeah, I, I can buy into, you know, a lot of what I, I do know. Um, you know, some I am sort of practicing with, you know, others others that I'm not. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I would say that it, you know, it helps for the most part. And, and I, you know, as, as we've mentioned and kind of joked about, you know, I came... Out a lot of this stuff as you know as a skeptic mm. and as a you know sort of a non-believer if you like but you know doing this podcast in itself you know as, as well as people i've sort of met along the way have kind of opened me up to a whole different experience and yeah. way of thinking with regards to religion and spirituality mm. and healing and self-healing and you know i don't you know i don't want to get all like hippie and trippy about it but it's it's, <laughs> it's bringing a lot of those you know elements you know sort of to it but i'm you know i'm an, i'm a newbie and all i did was went out and kind of looked at it and and try to kind of open my mind i guess to it and i think that's what not, needs to be done not just go and be like ask bollocks what are we talking utter about nonsense that. utter nonsense that you know sort of look at it and i guess just give it a chance and just be like okay just read about it you know watch the videos watch whatever listen to things and just get other perspectives don't just go to one source material yeah. you know read that and then use that as your basis for you know belief mm. if there's other people out there with different views on essentially the same thing try and read all of them or at least some of them to give you a more balanced you know and that's that's the sort of the approach i was trying to get at with the like the religion thing you know mm. A lot of people seem to believe in the same thing, but they just come from different perspectives yeah. or whatever. But you've all come from the same starting point. So it's just a case of like reading all of them and just seeing the kind of 
the you know, I suppose the good bits in all of them yeah. instead of just being well, you don't believe in what I don't believe in. So, you know, I'm not, you know, and then so it's you're the wrong. same. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and that's what you know, you, you know, is trying to get out with that. I mean, it's the same with you know spirituality as well. So yeah. many different people have got different understandings of what it means to them and what it benefits and stuff. <laughs> So just read all of it, yeah. you know, and yeah, and I guess, and that that goes with the mental health side as well, you know, with the the causation for, you know, the you know sort of possession. Don't get honed in on that. Yeah, look at what's causing it, the different symptoms, the different causations, and you know, well, this I think we've like we already established um, Western psychology way of thinking mm. and medicine. It is the minority. Yeah, in its belief of spirit possession or, or yeah. disbelief in, of of, of spirit yeah, possession as yeah. well, you know. So yeah, there's more I, people that believe it than don't, which which was quite yeah, quite telling. Su- su- yeah, quite telling, definitely. Yeah, you know, there could be some method to the madness, yeah. <laughs> as it were. You know, yeah. for want of a better phrase. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, it it was quite a heavy episode <laughs> in that respect, and yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think. Um, no, I think we've done done pretty good to to present some information to you guys, and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Um, yeah, absolutely. we haven't necessarily got off the fence because I don't think there's anything to really get off the fence about. You know, um, I mean, we've given our kind of thoughts and views on on certain things, and you know, that's all it is. You know, our th- thoughts and, and views, and but yeah, there's nothing to really get off the fence about per se because it can't be necessarily proved or disproved. It is just kind of. Until they start opinion. looking at it in a scientific manner. Until they start giving it the scientific respect, I guess, that yes. it requires, then it can only be opinion at this point. And that's all ours is. So, you know, as always, we invite anyone to, you know, get in touch, whether you agree, whether you disagree, yep. whatever. You know, we want to open a debate on these things that we, you know, kind of present um, and whether it is to talk about whether you know one of us is wrong or whether one of us is right or mm. or just to bring a conversation to the the forefront you know we're we're happy to do that and we welcome it so you know yep. we're on you know we're on facebook and yep. uh instagram twitter we've got an e- you know email address so you know there's plenty of opportunities you know even the youtube you know comments on there yep. or, you know, under the video you know reach out and let us know don't be Get shy you know we don't you know we don't bite you know we we welcome he does <laughs> only if you ask though um <laughs> but no, we welcome the conversation you know or, or you know debate you know as long as it is a healthy one um yeah yeah absolutely and uh yeah just if you want to please do get in touch, yeah, get yeah. In touch it's the same guys. handle it's cryptid ramblers podcast on all of the socials or cryptid rambler podcast um at hotmail.co.uk yep That's right. um so yeah reach out yeah, we're on all the socials, like you said. Yeah, we're on uh, all of them. So, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Twitter. Yeah, uh, we're on YouTube as well as you guys are now watching. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, a big thank you to everyone that has tuned in and uh, watched us or listened to yeah. us ramble on for two Thank, hours. Yeah. Thanks for sticking with it. I hope, <laughs> hope it's been of uh, some enjoyment, if nothing else. So yeah, the way you, easiest way you guys can uh, support your favourite podcast <laughs> is uh, like share comment um subscribe get the word out there guys um, yeah. we just recently hit 100 subscribers on youtube so yeah a bit of a milestone thank you for us yeah, thank you very us. much for, yeah. for getting us to that point yeah so very very much, much appreciated yeah um and uh thank you to our patreons justin yeah. james and david thank you for your continued you. support guys yeah much appreciated. Um, don't, don't forget you can also get on the patreon and get early access to the video and audio podcast that we put out there you know, each out, yeah. bi-weekly yeah, as we go absolutely. along. Um, and yeah, like we said at the beginning of the episode, we're trying to get a new merch store up and running. Um, yep, working on that. Yes. And as soon as we've got some updates for you, we'll certainly put them on the socials. Indeed we will. But, um, until that time, it's goodbye from me. <laughs> and it's goodbye from me. And remember, men of great spirit, are at high risk at a time when small souls rule the world. Oh, very good. I like that. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I like that one.